Hey guys, I've uh, been able to pick up some really cool stuff the last couple weeks. Uh, my wife and I took a trip up to um, Greenville, South Carolina, and while we were up there, we visited several stores. Uh, one was a uh, local comic shop called Borderlands Comics, which if you watched in my previous videos, you've heard me mention this place. Uh, Borderlands has some really cool stuff. Uh, their dollar boxes are as good, if not better, than any other place I've ever been. So I was really been really looking forward to going up there to uh, rummage through their boxes. But first, I'm going to show the uh, graphic novels, trade paperbacks, and some archive editions that I picked up. First, picked up Superman Archives Volume Three. This includes Superman number 9, number 10, number 11, and number 12. Uh, this one I was very happy to find. When I was uh, a young fella, I had the opportunity to buy Superman number 9, the real issue, for 50 bucks, and it was in like really good shape. This was a long time ago, so just keep that in mind. I didn't have 50 bucks on me, I had $35, and the guy would not sell it to me. And that's been one of the biggest disappointments of my entire life, collecting comics. So when I saw this one, and I said, well, at least you know I'll have the opportunity to read it. I was very happy to pick this up, and I think this was $8.99, something like that. Alright, picked up uh, Detective Comics. Volume 7 with Anarchy. Uh, I don't really buy too much new stuff because uh, it really just doesn't, well, to be quite honest, I don't. a lot of the stories aren't about liking. But this one had Anarchy in it, and I'm a Batman fan, so I thought I'd pick it up. Plus, it was cheap. I think it was $3.99. This one interested me. This is Batman 66 meets Wonder Woman 77. Um, it was cheap, it was $4.99, and I flipped through one that somebody had taken the shrink wrap off of, and the artwork was really good, so looking forward to reading that. This next one was one that I found that just, anyway, I flipped through it, and it just is called Red Menace. I like stories that are set back in the uh, 1940s, 1950s, and this one's set in 1953 during the um, McCarthy era, where they were uh, trying to ferret out the, the communists who were in Hollywood and politics and different things. And this centers around two heroes, one called the Eagle. Uh, just looked like a really cool story, and it was—I think it was either a dollar ninety-nine or two ninety-nine for this trade paperback. So I picked it up. This one—I hadn't seen a copy of this book in a long time. It's called *Mr. Punch*, uh, written by Neil Gaiman and illustrated by Dave McKean. This is the 20th anniversary edition. I'm pretty sure. Flip it around, see. Yeah, 20th anniversary edition. Uh, this book was one of the things that, for those who didn't read the Sandman comic back in the 90s, this was our first introduction to Neil Gaiman and Dave McKean. Uh, just a really dark story. Um... Just typical Neil Gaiman and uh, the Dave McKean art just sets the story off. Found this one. This is a big book. It's called The Black Widow, The Complete Comics History. This book has got a, a re reprints a lot of the older Black Widow stories from Avengers in the 60s and some of the Daredevil issues from the early 70s where she was a co-star in the book for a while. Um, just really cool stuff. Good artwork. Um, like this picture it was on the back. Just nice book and it was cheap. It was 6 dollars 
Got Elseworld Superman. This reprints all of the Elseworld stories from the 90s and early 2000s with Superman. Uh, it's got it's got the one with, during the Revolutionary War, during the Civil War, and several other the other ones that are really really good. And again, I got it cheap. It was 6.99. This was just an odd one that I picked up. Creature Commandos. These were characters that were in the latter issues of Weird War Tales back in the early 80s um, when Weird War Tales was kind of winding down. But the stories were, were really unique because they took uh, Demetrius, who, who wrote it, took the uh, Frankenstein monster, werewolf, Dracula, and um, I can't remember who the other guy is, but anyway, he took those characters and set them set it during World War II, where these guys fought against the Nazis. It was just they're just fun stories that uh, I remember reading when I was a kid, and this collects all of them, so I picked it up. Plus, it was cheap; it was three ninety nine. I've got a good many of the. Dark Tower books. This was one I didn't have. This is The Gunslinger, The Journey Begins. This would be the very beginning of the story. Um, it's a hardback, so, and you know, still in shrink wraps, brand new, so picked it up for $4.99. This is one I've been looking at for a, for a while. Not exactly sure if the story's any good or not, but it just, uh, reading the back, the description of it, just um, really intrigued me. And I found one that somebody had priced $7.99. Usually it's priced $14.99. I don't know. They might have been just trying to clear out some excess stock. So I finally picked this one up. It's a Straczynski story, so I'm really looking forward to reading it. This is the Silver Age World's Finest Volume 2. This, this reprints quite a few stories from the mid-late 50s and maybe some from maybe 1960 or 61. Uh, stories with Mixelplik and Batmite and aliens and all of that, all of the stuff that uh, they, used to pr they, they used to put in these stories back in the early 60s. Just fun stories, uh, good Silver Age stuff. So picked it up cheap, $4.99. Found another Batman 66 book. This one is meets Steed and Mrs. Peel from uh, the old TV show The Avengers. Uh, thought this was pretty cool, uh, so I picked it up. It was cheap also, it was $4.99. Also found Superman Action Comics Archives Volume 5. This reprints um, Action distorted Superman stories from Action Comics from number 69 to number 85. Uh, just good Golden Age stuff, so I picked it up. Found this one, Captain America versus the Red Skull. This reprints all of the old tales of suspense, um, Captain America Red Skull stories. Uh, it might reprint some from the very beginning when Tales of Suspense became the Captain America comic at issue 100. I know they did a Red Skull story in issue 101 and 102, I believe it was. Anyway, it reprints all that classic Jack Kirby stuff from the uh, from the 60s with Captain America and Red Skull. Happy to get that. This one was the one I was really happy to get. Thunder Agents Archives, Volume 4. I know that some of the Ollie stores, which is where I got all these, had Volume 1, but I wasn't fortunate enough to run up on it. But this one reprints Thunder Agents number 11, No Man number 1 and 2, and Dynamo number 3. So I was happy to get that, and I'll continue to look and see if I can find any of the other volumes cheap. All right, on to the comics. All of these I got from Borderlands and they were 75 cents a piece. 
This is a book called Redneck from, uh, I think it's Image Comics. Yeah, Image Comics number six. Just looked like an interesting book. This is number seven. So, thought I'd pick it up. I mean, for 75 cent a copy, I'm not missing much. Alright, this is number eight. And number nine. These center around, as far as I can guess, and I haven't read them yet, it's an area where vampires have invaded. Uh, the stories are really bloody. Uh, use quite a bit of uh, salty language, shall we say. This is number 10. And number 11. Also picked up number 13. Picked up the Spirit, number 85, from Kitchen Sink Press. This reprints uh, some of the very last Spirit stories that were drawn in the early 50s, um, where the Spirit goes into outer space. These weren't my favorite Spirit stories, but, you know, they're really cool, have good artwork, so picked it up for 75 cents. Got the Green Lantern, Evil's Might, book one of three. Just an Elseworld story from DC. Um, I'm pretty sure this is uh, in New York in the early 1900s, where whoever the Green Lantern happens to be in the story, and I'm not exactly sure, where he fights um, Tammany Hall, Boss Tweed. Also picked up Avengers number 313 and the 2001 annual. Well, on this free comic book day, the Phantom issue reprints some uh, Charlton comics from the late 60s with Jim Aparo art. Just really cool artwork, good stories, stuff that I stuff that I remember reading when I was a little fella. Now, Captain America number 370. Couldn't resist this. All red skull on the cover. Had to get it. Got Captain America number 420, excuse me, 434. Anyway, just thought this cover looked pretty cool, so I picked it up. Got the Spirit from Dynamite number 2. Just love the Spirit. Got Guardians of the Galaxy number 11. I bought a couple of issues from this series uh, from another comic shop uh, a while back. This is just a really fun series. Uh, it's got... What's going on here? There we go. Anyway, it's got... Uh, it's set in the 31st century and it reflects back to what would have been, you know, the, the current comic books, 20th century, the ones from the 80s and 90s. Uh, it reflects back on that um, just really cool stuff that kind of makes you wonder, you know, exactly how it got this way. Um, you can see this one features a person that's the Phoenix. Looking forward to reading that. Also got number 22, which reintroduces Starhawk. And number 53 with Drax. Picked up an issue of The Walking Dead. Got number 159. Now, this issue of Detective Comics, Batman number 23. I uh, like the Wrath. Um, I've got his first appearance from that Batman special back in the 80s. Just I've always liked this character. I uh, thought that he was underutilized. I can see why they don't utilize him very much because he's basically a doppelganger for, for Batman. And uh, with Hush, with the Hush character, they he's kind of, well, not needed, but anyway, he's still a cool character. That Lone Ranger, number three. I like Western comics. Um, this Lone Ranger one was very well done, and uh, it was not four dollars. Again, all these were 75 cents. I've bagged and rebagged and done some things with these, so still paying attention to the prices on the covers. Picked up Legion of Superheroes, number 274. I'm trying to get a run of these, and this was one that I needed, so 
happy to pick that up. Also got number 303. This one's an upgrade. Um, the one I've got has like a smudge on it. It looks like almost like lipstick or something. I don't know what the heck it is. It's red is all I can tell you and it won't come off. Got Beach Superheroes number 350. And I got issue of the Baxter series number 45 just like that cover. I'd, I'd read about this issue. This is Superman number 415. The uh, story itself just sounded really interesting, and I wanted to read the original story, so saw this in the box. I picked it up. I got Airboy from Eclipse Comics number 47. I like Airboy. I like the old um, World War II stories. This is one that is I haven't read it yet, but if I'm not mistaken, this one is set in the 40s and what was then present day. And it uh, reveals a lot of things about uh, the old, it re references back to a lot of the old 1940s Airboy stories. And that's just really cool because <clears throat> kind of hard to find those old Airboy comics. Well, they weren't Airboy then, there was something else. I can't remember what they were, but. Anyway, those are kind of hard to find, so to see something that references back, references back those stories is pretty cool. Picked up Vigilante number 27. Um, Alan Moore wrote quite a few of these Vigilante stories. Um, so I try to pick up the ones that either show that he wrote them or ones that I suspect he wrote. Anyway, if you can find them, <clears throat> the character itself is is kind of blah but when Alan Moore writes these stories even with him in it they're really 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 good so if you can find them cheap pick them up I've been piecemealing this one together this is the prisoner book B from DC um, you know this is based on the old 1960s uh, television show just a really weird strange story um, there's a lot of people that, that love this, love that old show, which I've watched it and I like it. It's just, it's just strange enough to be interesting. So, thought I'd pick this one up. Not exactly sure what this is. I know it's a Magneto comic. And it's number zero. It might be total crap, I don't know. But I've been seeing this one in some boxes and I've always passed it up. And then I didn't see it for a while. So, when I saw it this time, I decided, I said, well, I'll go ahead and pick that up. Got the Human Torch, issue number one. This was one that they printed up uh, 70 years of Marvel. I like the original Human Torch. I like the old um, story set in the 1940s. So thought this one would be pretty cool, so picked it up. Got Comics Interview, number 55. I enjoy this the, the, these old interview magazines. Uh, it's just kind of a nostalgic thing. Plus, it's a lot of good information from writers and artists that haven't done interviews in a long time. So, now Indiana Jones and the Fate of Atlantis. I've seen several of these Indiana Jones comics in boxes, and they just look really interesting. The artwork looked really good. These are by Dark Horse, by the way. So, thought I'd pick them up and give them, pick this one up and give it a try. This one is Night Force number one. This is one uh, where Wolfman, Marv Wolfman and Gene Colan, who did uh, Tomb of Dracula for so long, got together and did this book at DC. And I've heard that it was good, but I never have read any of them, you know, even after all these years. So found this one, and I also found number eight. So I picked it up. This one was a why not. This is an old Charlton Beetle Bailey number 78. Just picked it up because why not? Got Gilgamesh 2, book volume 1. Got a couple other volumes of this, and they're pretty cool, so picked that one up. Found this old coverless Silver Age comic. This is Metal Men number 26. I like old comics, so coverless, why not? Pick this one up. This is Classics Illustrated Adventures in Science. 
This one has, if I remember correctly, Reed Crandall art in it. And I've always liked Reed Crandall's stuff. Uh, Crandall drew primarily back in the 1940s. And, uh, you know, <laughs> unless you got a lot more money than me, you can't afford those old issues. So pick that one up just to get a sampling of his art. This one, lastly but not leastly, 75 cent, Conan number 14, The Coming of Elric. Uh, any of you who are familiar with the Michael Moorcock stories of Elric, this one I really didn't expect to find in a 75 cent dollar box. Uh, yeah, it's got a chunk out here and a chunk out here, but it's complete and got a cover on it, so... You know, I was excited to find this one. This one was one that I didn't think I would get cheap, and I ended up getting it cheap anyway. Well, that's my haul. Um, hope you saw something you liked, uh, something maybe sparked an interest. Uh, not sure when I'll make another one. Uh, they canceled Heroes Con again this year, so looking forward to 2022. Um, like, comment, subscribe. We'll see you next go-round. Thanks, guys.